Well, they've done an amazing thing in combining communism with capitalism. That's because right. If you just have North Korea, you never develop a real superpower. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I, I beat this drum and I get called crazy all the time because what I'm trying to tell people is that communism is what's happening to this country. Okay. But it doesn't look like communism because it's like, how is Nike communist? Right. And I'm picking on Nike. No, how is Boeing? Let's pick on Boeing instead. How is Boeing communist? You know, they've all these – how is Disney communist, right? They're huge mega corporations. What did, um, what did Google just lose over <laughs> its stupid AI? $90 billion or something. It's something insane. Like I didn't even know they had that much money to lose. And it's like, holy crap, you know, in stockholder value or whatever, or shareholder value. I think so, it was only $9 billion. Was it – I thought that was Bud Light that was not. No, no. Bud Light was 27. Whole, but it, look at what we're, we're like haggling over like Insane amounts 11, 12 figure, you know. I know, right? Yeah. And so it's like at least 10 figure numbers of money. Like Elon kind of rolls in that department, but nobody else does. Why? How, how in the world are these huge things communist, right? So communism didn't work, right? Soviet Union sucked. North Korea sucked. Cuba sucks. Like. I'm sure it's like geographically beautiful, but we know those places are dysfunctional as hell. Right. We can go to the Eastern Bloc. They're still devastated in a lot of ways. They're still not all the way together. Like communism didn't work. But if we think of like what Marx did leading up to, say, 1917 when Lenin kind of took over as communism 1.0, that never really even got off the ground. Then Lenin got it off the ground and you get the Soviet model, which is – Soviet just means committee, by the way. If you didn't know that, it's like a ruling council or committee. So Soviet model takes over with the with what they called Marxism Leninism and that worked kinda it worked it they still had it in China till Mao died they had it in Soviet Union until what 89 90 91 something like that when it fell but what happened was when Mao died like the Soviet Union wasn't doing great it was starting to fall apart a new model got picked up and nobody's we talk about Mao Zedong sometimes and I I would love to talk to you all day about Mao that's my new research project but we don't talk about his successor. His successor was Deng Xiaoping. And this is where I actually disagree with Vivek about what I was just saying. Deng Xiaoping had a saying that was, I don't care if the cat is black or white as long as it catches mice. And what he was talking about is I don't care if we use markets or we use a Soviet-style central committee to organize our society as long as China's economy comes back. That's what he really meant. And so Deng didn't come up with this new model to open the markets on his own. We didn't go to China to sp necessarily just to spread democracy. We went to build China. And who's we? Well, let's name the names. Who was in the meeting? And there's a movie about so – some of these meetings were in China and there's not a movie. But there's a movie called Mr. Deng Goes to Washington that took place in Washington, D.C. So you can go watch the movie. I'm not making this up. Deng Xiaoping was the leader of China. He's already networking with, with Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum in his spacesuit. But he meets with – and the list of people were Henry Kissinger, uh, Jibinu uh, Brzezinski, allegedly T.H. Chan, David Rockefeller, and the sitting – new emperor or whatever, CCP chairman of China, Deng Xiaoping, and they cook up this plan to open Chinese markets. And the plan was to maybe to spread democracy into America, but I suspect it was mostly to get really rich. We open those markets, huge amount of money, giant multinational corporations are not tied to any geographical place, and they can get rich off their balls. Now, some of these guys, I think, were also ideologically motivated. The Rockefellers have funded communist crap all over the world for, for a very long time. China was communist. Deng Xiaoping said, well, I'm not opening the market for the market. I'm opening the market for socialism to make socialism productive. And so they had a – I think there was more of a plan there than we take, take to, into account, which means Vivek gives – I need a tinfoil hat. <laughs> <laughs> Vivek – sees that our motivations in building China were necessarily good. I think the motivations for building China were to create the pincher of a trap that's called Thucydides' trap in ancient kind of military strategy that the only escape from would be to facilitate China's rise and decimate the West in order to avoid a nuclear-tipped World War III. And I okay. think they knew what they were doing and so were going to get rich on it. you think by spreading democracy, their idea was to reinvigorate China's economy so that China becomes a threat? Yeah. Really? Yeah, so as China gets... So the, the that is these, so 4D chess, uh, <laughs> the back pages of Reddit conspiracy. Well, listen... <laughs>